Quinn Ball. Southeast region in Orlando, Florida. Some really good games. Boston College, Georgia Tech, and Temple in Cincinnati. Temple from Cincinnati been at it already. So that'll be a, a real battle there. You got the inside play of Long and Forrest and Temple is a team that just comes out and plays really solid defense. That, that'll be an interesting matchup. Thirty-seven, twenty-seven, fourteen, eighteen to go in the second half. Mississippi State. Some felt that they would not show the patience against this Princeton team. Four on the shot clock. Johnson, he'll have to let it fly, and he's short. But Mississippi State has shown the patience, both offensively and defensively. tell you how proud thus far with 1343 to go that Richard Williams has to be of his team he did not think they would have the kind of patience that would get them in position to to be successful in this game he thought they'd be quick offensively and just not stay after defense Darrell Wilson banging in the three he's got 11 points 40 27 Princeton can't get anybody to knock down threes. They don't give themselves a very good chance. Two, three zone, that's what you've got to have. But periodically, one thing that Princeton doesn't really do very well against the zone particularly is they don't penetrate the zone. See, that's a penetration by the pass, and you see the kind of success you have. But they won't penetrate it on the dribble and try to find anybody, and that's something that they need to be able to do. Ninth point for Mitch Henderson. Ten-point game once again. It will stay a 10-point game, I believe, as long as Mississippi State stays patient and just keeps moving the ball. Because they can always, Wilson is hot. He can be a nice little outlet for them if they have to have that. Well, on the shot clock, he'll put it on the floor, pull up in traffic, and draw the foul. So far, the Princeton defense is not as effective this evening as they were on Thursday against UCLA. UCLA didn't, wasn't able to take advantage of what they had inside. And tonight, with Eric Dampier, what he did, that's one of the ways you're able to take advantage of it. They've been able to throw it inside, and if they don't throw it inside, they give it to Darrell Wilson, and he's been knocking down three-pointers. Darrell Wilson, a 79% free-throw shooter on the season. Made the SEC All-Tournament team. 20 points and 5.3 rebounds. He's been having a little bit of getting rust a little bit. He was, his SEC trophy that he got, he dropped it. And the guys have been giving him a little heat, of which they should. Got a little, got a little dent in it, but we'll keep it anyway. Everybody in the SEC or is watch Mississippi State knows that he can fly. Llewellyn. And Wilson snatches it down. Here's Bullock running the show. Jones on the left wing. Dante Jones, 11 points. You can see Mississippi State starting to get into their own little flow here. This, this is the kind of field they like to have for. 15-point lead, the biggest of the game. For Mississippi State. Somebody got a hand on it. Knocked out of bounds will stay down here. Bulldogs pulling away. They're up by 15. And for the Tigers, Ryan Earl, number 10. Up by 15 now over the Tigers of Princeton, 45 to 30. Let's show you what's going on up in Albuquerque. Pat O'Brien in New York, along with Clark Kellogg. Drexel now leads Syracuse 35 to 32 with 15-29 left in the game. Both teams have picked it up offensively already. 19 points between them, and we haven't gotten to the first TV break. But Drexel, I think, has the momentum because they're getting easier shot opportunities, and they're rebounding their defensive board. Drexel with the ball now, leading by three against Syracuse and with the crowd well on their side, as you can hear in the background. 
Well, that, that probably took a little bit out of him, that air ball from behind the arc there. Albuquerque fans very much into basketball, as Philadelphia fans should be. Philadelphia ball doing well in the tournament. Temple, Drexel, Villanova, all still alive in the tournament right now. Philly ball. They're in a timeout there. We'll keep you posted on this one. A bit of a surprise. Drexel up by three. Let's go back to Indianapolis. That's the old school hook shot there. Eleven oh four remaining in the second half. Mississippi State up 45-32. The second round of the Southeast Region. Mississippi State leads 47 to 36. Excitement still brewing up in Albuquerque. Syracuse, though, has made a 7-0 run, Clark Kellogg, and leads 39 to 35. Sorry, Sorry but John Wallace has knocked down the three, and he's gotten more aggressive on the glass. And right now, Syracuse sensing the chance to put more dis distance between them and Drexel. John Wallace stepping up his game, but on the other side, Malik Rose, also on the glass, 11 rebounds for him, five points. It's a 9-0 run now. Syracuse in white. Drexel bringing the ball up now. Jeff Myers for Drexel has 13. And they go to a timeout. We'll keep you posted on this game at 11.53 left. You'll end up out there, actually, after your game. Mississippi State and Princeton. Let's go back to Q and G. Fly shot off the back of the iron. And the tip in by Jeff here. points for Eric Dampier. Mississippi State leads Princeton 49-36. Been all Mississippi State in the sense that they've, that they've played this game as well as I think they can play this kind of game against a team like Princeton who is very deliberate in their offense. Stays very solid after you defensively and, and Mississippi State has been up to the task and used their patience well. Mississippi State champions of the SEC tournament. They won the West Division. Four on the shot clock. Johnson Shot clock violation. The freshman unable to draw iron. And but, it's Pete Carrill. But I don't know how much that he can do about that. Sidney Johnson's got to take the shot. If you can't throw it out to somebody standing 15 feet away, I mean, and you're going to the basket with the shot clock going under three. If you got that one, you got to loft it up to the basket and, and hope you get it to the rim and take it back. Here's Dampier. Goodrich on his back. Putting it on the floor. Nice quick turn. Doyle with the rebound. So close is almost too easy for him. Under five to play in the second round of the Southeast region. Here's Goodrich. Not a block, but just as good as a block. Dampier got up quickly, and, and, and that's why a good shot is it. Earlier today, Connecticut beat Eastern Michigan. Jerome Sheffer, Ray Allen scored 52 of UConn's 95 points. They will play the winner of this game. Now that, that's a matchup that will have guards, some very good guard play, if you will, because Jerome Sheffer and Ray Allen against Daryl Wilson and, and Bullard. Those guys will get after it. No way, no way. They will get after it on both ends of the floor because they got the athletic ability of both Wilson and Bullard. And you, you know what Shepard and Allen can do. Lewis Scott. He's got the game. He's got the money. He's got the women. He's got two big problems. You are in beam town now, baby! 59 to 36, our score. Mississippi State leads Princeton. We want to take you out to Albuquerque, where Syracuse now leads Drexel. 41-38, but getting a fight from them. 11.06 left in the game. Let's go to Derek Dickey and Tim Brando. Drexel trailing by three, nine minutes deep here in the second half. West Regional second round. So much history in this building. The pin in Albuquerque. Fry can't get it to go down. Drexel. 
doing everything they can to hang with the number four seed out of the Big East. Continuing to hustle after loose balls. The Dragons are not giving up. Every time it seems that the Orangemen score a basket or two to pull away, Bill Harrion will utilize a timeout and make a difference to get back in this game. Bergen. He'll give up those threes from time to time as that uh, Dr Drexel defense sluts off in the middle. They try to keep Wallace and Reef Snyder and Hill from being so dominant as they were at times in the opening half. What a huge basket by Todd Bergen. Three-point field goals being timed to Syracuse in the opening round. Wallace the rebound, the quick outlet to Lazarus Sims. We touched on Malik Rose so often being injured. Sims playing on a leg and a half for that injured knee. Loose ball. And it will belong to Syracuse underneath. Great hustle. Great hustle by Cornelius Overby. He doesn't give up on this loose ball at all. He tips it out of the hands of Lazarus Sims, and he tries to stay with it, stay with it. He still can't quite get it, but he wants this ball. He wants to keep possession of this ball for the Dragons. Wallace trying to get free on the baseline. Sims gets it to him. Working against Guitar. Protected by Guitar. Overby has been reluctant to shoot in the last few minutes. Myers isn't. Off the back iron. Malik throws a put back. is what's going to get the Dragons back in this game. Chuck Guitar, a couple of inches smaller than John Wallace, blocks this ball and keeps it in bounds. And the Dragons, they are going to be aggressive, as we mentioned, going after loose balls. This is nice hustle by a guy with a bad ankle. Malik Rose absorbs the contact and takes it home. Just seven points, but 12 rebounds for Malik Rose. Bill Harrion pulling all of the strings, trying to keep his team in it. As the game progresses, he gets more confident. Wallace the rejection. Rose back at you. Great, great hustle. Hill is on the deck. He's hurt. We mentioned it earlier, Derek. This is a Syracuse team that is not as deep as Drexel. And it sounds very strange to say, frankly, because you're talking about a team that most of the country knows very little about versus a team steep in tradition. That everybody knows about. Syracuse will only go too deep in their, into their bench, whereas Drexel will go as many as nine and ten deep and get production out of the guys off the bench, and they have this evening. And at near 5,000 feet in elevation, it could count late in the game. Otis Hill asserting himself in a big way. 14 points in the game. So after the headache, he gives one to Bill Harrion on the other end. If I'm the Orangeman, I'm still going to give the ball to Otis Hill anytime he was within 15 feet of the basket. Bad pass by Rose, picked off by Cipolla. Nice. Beautiful move by Jason Cipolla. Going reversal to give the Orangeman a six point lead. Jason Sapola showing that experience does pay off. He's a junior college transfer out of Tallahassee Community College. That's the first fast break point of the night for Syracuse. Guitar, not there. Cleared by Wallace. The Arsman wants this to be a half court game. Side shot will be there for Sims. They've been slumping off him. He's been reluctant to take the shot. Not even a factor in terms of looking at the basket. Rosarez has to look to score. Wallace. Strong move by John Wallace. Big shoulder by Wallace to be able to use that left to clear out. Only six points in the first half for Wallace. Already nine in the second half. 15 for the game. And this is the largest lead for Syracuse. 50 to 42. Overby. The dump down to Rose. Tough chance, but he comes away with it. Nine shot on the clock. shot clock. Guitar. Rose again. Hits the deck. 
tie ball, the arrow to Drexel. And listen to this crowd. All of them didn't come from Philadelphia. Look at the respect by Rose and Hill. Plenty of it as we're coming down to cases. Sapola and company getting it done on the first fast break points. Syracuse Archman trying to not become a, another dubious West Regional statistic. And Malik Rose, his stats. Samson life, how about that? 1,513 career rebounds. That's why they call him the Shaq of the Knack. The stats are Shaq-like. <laughs> He's only the second Drexel Dragon to have his jersey retired. Mike Anderson did. And he's already retired. Every timeout by Bill Herrian leads to a basket. 50 to 44. That was a critical possession for them to convert. That would have taken it to a double-digit lead had the Orange been held and been able to go down and score. Orange men have been looking for the knockout punch since very early in the second half. Drexel failing to hit from the perimeter, a real problem. Bergen gets free on the block. Shot clock at seven. Long rebound to Overby and a reach-in foul on Sims. That's his fourth. That's his fourth. As he glances over at us. Want to interrupt this game to let you look in on a little piece of history. This will be Pete Curl's final college game after 29 seasons at Princeton, 13 Ivy League titles. He's going down today against Mississippi State, just too strong for the Tigers of Princeton. They lead 61 to 41 now, and three ticks on the clock. And the story, Mississippi State wins and goes to the round of 16 for the second year in a row. But the big story is so long to Coach Carrill, at 65 years old, decided to call it quits, Clark. Had a fabulous run, he'll be missed. All that wisdom and knowledge only one guy. only one losing season ever at Princeton 514 wins and 11 tournament appearances what a career one second left in this game by the way it's a 20 point game about two tenths actually and what must he be thinking it's all the men associated with Pete Carell. Congratulations on a great career, Coach. And so long. Back to Albuquerque. It's in Judas, Syracuse now nursing a four-point lead, and within 26 seconds of one another, Lazar Sims and Otis Hill each picked up a fourth foul. Hence the look on the face of Jimmy Beheim. As the Drexel Dragons, once down by eight, have now scored four unanswered since the timeout by Bill Herrian. And the 12th seed trying to continue this theme of Albuquerque, the home of the greatest Cinderella story in 83, becoming the Cinderella first round in 96 of this NCAA tournament. The Drexel Dragons are not going away. They're playing tenacious defense. John Wallace just got a finger in the eye. and counting. Sims still on the floor with four fouls. Hill on the floor with four fouls. A three by Sims. That's why Jimmy Beheim keeps him into the game. He is a floor leader. He makes good decisions. And for him to take that shot after not looking at the basket for the last 15 minutes, excellent decision by Lazar Sims. But every time Drexel's needed a basket, they've gotten one. Overby, Riley. On the deck, loose ball to Bergen. Boy, Sims had snuck out, was wide open, but they didn't see him. Drexel is four for 23 from behind the arc, in sharp contrast to Thursday's win against 15 at Memphis. 50% against Memphis, they made nine out of 18. 
which allowed the big guy, Malik Rose, to be able to score inside. There's been a crowd firmly behind the underdog. We have a whistle. John Wallace has to look to score, but he also has to be able to recognize a double team. And in kicking this ball out to Lazar Sims, a good decision, yes, to get it out, but also a better decision for Sims to take the shot. We had an inadvertent whistle to stop play. The shot clock remains at 12. Sims will have to put it up. And put it in. First double-digit lead of the game. And another timeout by the Dragons. 440 remaining. Drexel down by 10. They're out there. On lead changes. Malik Rose playing on a poor ankle. Still with 14 rebounds. Drexel trails by 10. And Lazara Sims. Only nine points in the game. The Big East leader in assists, making the two biggest threes of this game for Syracuse. And out of the timeout, Malik Rose. Every time Bill Harrion gets a timeout, they get production on the offensive end. That's exactly what you want after a timeout, but you have to give Lazar Sims an awful lot of credit playing with a bad leg. And playing with four fouls, as is Otis Hill. And Otis now has 16. The Orangemen have been finding a way to get it done. And I think it all stems from Lazar Sims making those three-pointers, giving the confidence back to the Orangemen. Zarakas stepping inside the arc, gets the deuce. And that may be a positive sign for a future three. Just to be able to make a basket. Drexel needs baskets right now. They also need defense to try to hold Syracuse. Don't let them get second and third looks. Now you don't think of Lazar Sims in the same vein as perhaps a Sherman Douglas or a Pearl Washington. But uh, the history books will be awfully kind to him when his playing days are done at the Carrier Dome and at Syracuse. He averaged seven assists a game in Big East play and also 50% behind the three-point arc. Wallace gives Syracuse the 10-point cushion yet again. The largest lead that they've had tonight. Georgia already in, having knocked off top-seeded Purdue. They'll move on to Denver. Guitar up top. Myers trying to keep it alive and reels it in for Drexel. That's an NBA three. The iron unkind to the Drexel offensive perimeter tonight. And Hill bringing down yet another rebound. Jeff Myers did not have to force that shot, but John Wallace is showing an awful lot of patience. Last time down, he gave the ball back out to Lazar Sims, who hit the outside shot. This time, the defense is not sure. Is he going to go back out? Is he going to stay in? He keeps it in and turns and takes that easy jumper. Guitar taking a seat, and some offensive for defensive substitutions now being made by Bill Harry, the North Atlantic Conference Coach of the Year for a third season in five years spent in Philadelphia. <laughs> Orangemen are getting the flow of this game where they want it. They want half court. They don't want the transition style that Drexel wants. Wallace nearly lost it. Niesler in the game defending Lazar Sims. He's got a foul or so to give. They may have to resort to that in a moment. Wallace rejected by Niesler. Outlet pass to Myers. Sims is the only Orangeman back. They'll have to pull it back out now. Nice pass. Riley. Duracus with a quality look to find Brian Riley. 2-12 left. The Dragons just won't give up. In shopping for a luxury performance. I love movies. Always have. Ever since I was a kid. That's why I got Prime Star. With 95 channels, I get old movies, new movies, all kinds of movies. All in digital picture and sound. Boy, and I didn't have to buy the dish either. With Prime Star, there is no equipment to buy. It's all a part of the service. It all starts for about a dollar a day. Life's short. Enjoy. Call 1 800 Prime Star. This is the Augusta National Golf Club. It's my favorite course and my favorite tournament. 
It's a tradition unlike any other, the Masters in CBS Sports. 60 to 52, and with only one timeout remaining for the Dragons, one would think they'll have to put the Orangemen at the line. I think so, at least try to stop the clock, but when the Orangemen need a big basket, they've gone with the experience of Sims. Also gone with Wallace, and Otis Hill have done a terrific job. Pressure and a leak out to Cipolla. They made it look easy that time. A 10-point cushion, and now Drexel needs a hoop in a hurry. Preferably a three. They need good looks at the basket and stop the clock if they can. Loose ball to Cipolla. The knockout punch may be in the midst of being thrown as the quick foul is given by Drexel. Myers picking it up. What a terrific effort by the Drexel Dragons. Not only this tonight, but this season. Outstanding season. 27 wins, only three losses coming in. You see our reset. The possession arrow to Drexel and only one remaining timeout. Jason Cipolla at the line. A fine complimentary player. This is a Syracuse team that knows how to get it done in the half court. And uh, as for Drexel, they ran out of bombs from beyond the arc. Were they hitting from three, particularly their guards, they would be right in this thing. Well, that's how they were able to compete with Memphis Tigers, by hitting from the outside, but tonight they just did not have it. Loose ball again, tied up with the arrow to Syracuse. Jimmy Beheim. You talk about all of the success that he has had. And yet he, he gets more grief than just about any Division I coach I can think of for not having won the brass ring. And he's done it in the last few years with talent not similar to the talent he had in the late 80s. That's right. This may not be his most talented team that he's had, but so far, these guys are playing like they want to continue. And, it's, and he certainly lacks depth this year. Far and away, perhaps, uh, the smallest bench that he's had in quite a while. A lot of people have accused Jimmy of recruiting a lot of foreign players, but he told us yesterday that he's never gone overseas to watch a player play. The players that he has on his team that are from overseas, he's recruited right here in the United States. Overby. Hands a tray and a quick timeout. That's the final one for Drexel. A trail by nine. He's using 65% shooting from the floor in the second half, coupled with a cold Drexel backcourt. To catapult their lead to nine with 120 remaining. And now Drexel will have to resort to fouling, and they do. They, this time they get Sims. Malik Rose picking it up. His third. Malik Rose doing all he can for his team, even with the bad wheel, and he certainly had one today. And there are times when you do have an injury that you can't give 100% of the energy that you, you give 100% of the energy you have, but you can't give the same energy that you normally would have, but Malik did his best. Terrific job rebounding the ball and trying to make his team a bit. 11 points, 14 rebounds. What a terrific young man. Senior. Homegrown star, really only only recruited by Ryder and Lafayette at the Division I level, and further proof that a late bloomer can get it done at the very highest of the collegiate level. And his coach, Bill Harrion, said he never made a home visit to Malik's home. Malik and his parents actually came to the campus. He only saw him play a half of one high school game, and his assistant coach, Steve Seymour, said, you got to take him. And they did, and they're very happy that they did. Sims just as courageous for Syracuse with 11 and 7. And a quick trade from Myers. Still an eight point game with over a minute to play, and the quick foul against Wallace. We've seen stranger things happen to him. Three possession game. Wallace is on the free throw line. Chuck Qatar is fouled out. That's his fifth. And he had to give himself up. The clock is as much the enemy as is John Wallace at this stage. 
Guitar, a junior out of uh, neighboring New Jersey, transferred from Division II New Haven. A dream come true for him. He had a terrific season. Averaged almost, almost 10 points and five rebounds a game. Well, he was a quality acquisition to allow Malik Rose more room to bring the defense out from the perimeter, sort of a face-up center at six foot nine. That's a, that's a tremendous asset. Just was not on tonight. Over me, a three. Bergen the out with the set. Drexel playing hard throughout. No foul. As Myers got all leather. Bill Harrion did all he could. Someone's got to get it through the cylinder. He just didn't have enough of that in the second half. George Huggins picks up the foul. He will emerge as one of the true first round star coaches along the sideline in uh, the great tradition of the NCAA tournament. This is where first round strategists are born. We mentioned the other day that he does not get as, as much respect as some people think he should playing in the shadow of the big five in Philadelphia with Penn, LaSalle, Duquesne, Temple, and Villanova. But Drexel is a program that needs to be reckoned with. Sims gets one of the two, and the lead is 10. Precious seconds getting away from the Dragons. Myers needs help. Malik Rose, that's a three. Sapola the rebound. Now the Orangemen decided to play keep away as Sapola is fouled. When you think of the magnificent record they had, 26 and 3 coming into this NCAA tournament and then beating Memphis. And they were in every game they lost, including this one. Including this one. And they came in with a tremendous winning streak, second longest in the nation, having won their last 15 straight games. Now the white flag perhaps being given by Coach Harry in his Overby and Myers checkout. There are the three losses. Murray State. Mm, that's impressive. Mark Godfrey, the former UCLA assistant, coaches that team. They were a narrow loss away from making this NCAA tournament field themselves. And now Malik Rose will check out. And he deserves, deserves a hand. All of the applause that he'll get. 11 points, 15 rebounds. This is a young man that lost a brother. Tragically, had to become a, a father, if you will, for the remainder of his family, and has become the centerpiece of this Drexel program. And uh, everything that's right about intercollegiate athletics is embodied in Malik Rose. A fifth grade student teacher. Length of the floor pass to Sims. But it will be the Orangemen moving into the Sweet 16, joining the Georgia Bulldogs. A fourth seed and an eighth seed will come out of the pit in Albuquerque. Slipper comes off the Dragons from Philadelphia. Another win for the Big East Conference in this NCAA tournament. And our final score, 69 Syracuse, 58 Fort Drexel. Our genuine Chevrolet players of the game are Malik Rose from Drexel and Otis Hill from Syracuse. And in celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And the brackets from the Mountain Time Zone in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Georgia emerges having beaten the top seed Purdue out of the Big Ten and Syracuse coming out with a win over Drexel. For Derek Dickey, 
This is Tim Brando saying so long from Albuquerque. And when we return, you'll get a final fill-in from our folks in New York, Pat O'Brien and company. She's a certified goddess, your soulmate waiting to happen. Without your Motorola pager, you would have missed her, because you were out doing stuff. Biking, skating, sweating. Then she paged you. Could you put some lotion on her back? You jump fast enough to make Pavlov proud, because the wheels will wait, a goddess won't, without getting snippy. Thanks to your Motorola pager, you know now. Without one... Dave, are you there? Are you there? You're just a lonely guy in tight shorts. Dave. Mortgage payments, college tuition, career choices. People can get so lost in their day-to-day -day concerns that they simply avoid planning for their retirement. Unfortunately, that's life. New York Life has all kinds of life insurance policies to help make sure you enjoy your retirement. We can even help you catch up if you started planning late. That's New York Life, the company you keep. the hottest coaches in the game to switch anti- Welcome back, and due to the lateness of our games, uh, Touched by an Angel will be preempted. Next up is Dave's World, followed by Walker, Texas Ranger. A lot of basketball today. Clark Kellogg along with Pat O'Brien in our New York studios. And let's fill everybody in on what's going to happen tomorrow in our first tier of games. We come on at 12 o'clock noon, then about 12.15, New Mexico and Georgetown and Temple and Cincinnati. That'll be a physical game inside. Both of these teams playing well. They saw each other back in December. This is our second layer of games, a 6-3 game, Iowa and Arizona. Good matchup there. The Louisville-Villanova game, also a good 3-6 matchup. Boston College, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Texas Tech. Those are on our second, second round tier of games. Then on our later games tomorrow, the number two seed out west, Kansas, takes on Santa Clara. And then Wake Forest and Texas get a chance to see Tim Duncan. There. Tim Duncan in the second matchup. And then Kansas and Santa Clara, Steve Nash and Jacques Vaughn, a premier guard matchup. All right, uh, earlier today here on CBS, a little bit of history. Pete Carrill's final game. He loses to Mississippi State, 63-41. But an emotional time for Pete after the game, and we caught up with him, and here's Andrea Joyce. Coach, I know now that you don't like to philosophize about this, but now that it is over, could you share with us your thoughts about uh, leaving the college game? Well, I'm going to miss it. Um... I'll always be rooting for Princeton. What did you tell your players in the locker room? Well, I told them they have to get, they have to get stronger. They have to make more of a commitment to being good. They've got to get in there and, and see if they can enjoy physical contact because you saw the bodies on those guys and this game of basketball is not what it used to be when a guy had a slender body and they'd say he's a beautiful build for this game. That's not it. They're all built like tackles and guards in the football team have to do that. They're getting a new coach there who I think is terrific and is going to, is going to give them a lot more encouragement than I, than I did because I'm getting, as, I, as you get old, you get a little bit more impatient and drop balls and errant passes and missed assignments. And, and tonight I saw more air balls in one game that I think and I've seen in all my years of coaching which is probably, and the, and the only thing I feel bad about, the only thing, is that I wish we, we could have treated UCLA better. See, because we had to lose by four or six or eight. So that, that could have made that victory that much better. People would find it amazing that you're thinking about UCLA well, right now. We've been talking all weekend about how much you've meant to the game. What has it meant to you? Well... I'm getting my three square meters, <laughs> if I can be funny, but I don't think I can. I, I love basketball. What the heck can you say? You know how much we're going to miss you. Thanks, Coach.
think I prefer to let him have the last word. We'll be back in a moment. Day for everybody and put up the brackets. Uh, starting out in the East, UMass and Arkansas won today. A great job by Nolan Richardson. I Outstanding say. all year long. And he won at UMass. You heard him talk about it earlier today. And they will meet each other. And he said, I can't wait for this game on Thursday in Atlanta. Out in the Midwest, it was Kentucky. Well balanced attack. They look like Kentucky today. And next up, they meet Utah. And they'll play Thursday in Minneapolis. A lot of people probably had this matchup picked when they went to their brackets at the start of the tournament. Kentucky very strong. They go 11 deep. Patino thinks he's got five or six NBA players on that team. And Utah, uh, Keith Van Horn will have a couple days rest, so we'll see what happens there. Out in the southeast, UConn won today, and Mississippi State beat Princeton. They meet up on Friday in Lexington. A battle of a team that wants to get up and down in UConn with a more physical team in Mississippi State. And without Ricky Moore, what does that do to the Huskies? Well, it certainly cuts down on their speed, although he bought some time. He may be able to play a little bit in that game. Could Mississippi State be a surprise team in this tournament? And Tubby Smith got it done today against the number one seed out in the west of uh, Purdue, and they will play Syracuse next in Albuquerque. And so that's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. Our coverage begins at noon, straight up. High noon on St. Patrick's Day. Be careful tonight, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. And it went in, too.